Yeah, 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 yeah. How we doing? How we doing? Looking great. Looking good. Okay. All right. Let's go. Action. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Way In. Today, we're going to do an overview of superhero movies that are coming out in 2020. So this is just going to be a brief overview of a lot of films. And then we're going to come back and address these films with more scrutiny later in the in, later in the year. Good call. Good call. Okay. Well, I'll start off with um, first off uh, February seven. February we have the 7? Birds of Prey, which is Birds already, uh, of out Prey. Too. Yeah, I know. Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, directed by Kathy Yan. It looks like it'd be a very very good film. She's been she's uh, she's, she's done some film uh, feature stuff. She's mostly been in TV and short film stuff, but she's definitely very popular on the indie film circuits, and she's definitely up and coming in the scene. I noticed a lot of the new directors that are on some of these new films we're going to talk about are essentially very, very green, you might say. Oh, yeah. But they're going, that's the approach they're going with, and I either it's going to break or it's going to bust. I think it'll be okay. Yeah. I definitely think so. So, starting off, I don't know a lot about this movie. One thing that I did hear that I'm very excited for, Ian McGregor is in it. Yeah. And he is supposed to play the character Black Mask. Yes. So hopefully they make him comic book accurate. It's supposed to be. Which is going to be outrageously good. We haven't seen anything in the two trailers that they released. So, Well, one thing crossed. that's going around Hollywood, they're talking about that AT&T DC film thing where um, they introduce uh, a gay male character. So they're hmm. talking about the Black Mask might actually be a gay character in the film. Okay. Which I think will be pretty groundbreaking because we haven't seen a gay male character in anything yet. Look, at with Margot Robbie... You're doing well to begin with. She's definitely very, very popular. She's a talented actress. She's all, she's obviously a beautiful woman, you know, and she's been picking great roles, and she's so good as Harley. Like, she really... She pulls it off She well. crushes she owns Harley. Role. She does. Yeah. She's, you know, that, like Gal Gadot owns her role in Wonder Woman. Robbie crushes the, the Harley yeah, role, that, for sure. That was everybody's high point for Suicide Squad, yeah. you know? But, you know, with James Gunn coming in to direct Suicide Squad, too, we'll see. Which should be m superior than the first one. Yes. But the first one was very entertaining to a lot it of people. It was entertaining. It was fun. But you see what else she's, she's going to be involved in also. There's talk of, uh, obviously, the Suicide Squad, too, which we just hinted at. Yes. Which is going to usher in a, uh, a yet to be named Joker Harley film which is going to follow that and then Gotham City Sirens which is interesting taking a pause and stepping back real quick which iteration of Joker are we going to get because as we, as we know our boy um, Jared Leto is now with uh, Marvel or Sony I guess uh, yeah Sony. I, I think the Jared Leto one is sort of out of the mix a little bit. I think uh, it's going to be hard to really have two major guys in the role. I, I have it listed as like the, possibly the second film. It could be l much later. Than yeah, yeah. It could be a couple years off. Yeah. But I think they do want to work it with, with obviously, with Phoenix. We'll see how he does, obviously, in uh, with the Academy Awards coming up. It should be... Uh, fingers crossed he doesn't fingers get crossed. I really want him to do well because it just uh, does well for the company. And, and look, I want Marvel and DC films and to be successful. It. He, he crushed, crushed it. it. More than crushed it. I Better mean, get it. <laughs> He deserves it for sure. And I think it's good for the industry if we got Marvel and DC films doing well. Yes. Because it just holds well for the whole scene that we love. You know? The competition raises the excellence of both brands. Yeah, it truly does. I mean, I heard the, the film had some major reshoots, and the trailers seem to show a little inconsistencies. But, I mean, even the original uh, Suicide Squad trailers looked a little awkward. But, you know, people liked it still. Those were, they. that's when Warner Brothers were a little bit cumbersome with how they were producing their films like the new AT&T merger I think things are a bit more streamlined so we'll see so maybe these reshoots I get scared when I hear reshoots but maybe these reshoots are going to be for the better yeah they probably will I just think the only reason why I bought it I brought it up is because a lot of times people get fearful of it and then they uh, they actually they have a tendency to make a bigger deal out of it yeah all films go through reshoots all, all films you you know that more than anybody else and I definitely would hope that someday, before we wrap that, that particular film up, is I'd like to see a, a Harley Quinn solo film event. Yes. You know, maybe yeah. after this year, if she does well in all these films or whatever it might be, I'm pretty sure she will get that. She definitely deserves her own film. Now, here's a bit of an odd film coming up on March 13th. Uh, it's based on the uh, the Valiant comic called Bloodshot. Ten days before my birthday. Well, that that could be could hold well for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bloodshot with uh, with our boy Vin Diesel. Yeah, Diesel's popular. Look, it's another feature with a first-time director. And I don't know if that's a trend or anything, but like uh, maybe, maybe they're trying to keep the expenses maybe they're down. Taking, maybe they're taking chances. Maybe they're trying to keep expensive down with you know new directors. Uh, I've I seen the trailer. It looks okay. Yeah, it's not disastrous or anything. I'm not saying I'm thrilled about it. The nanotech, you know... 
that you know reconstructs his body super soldier thing okay i've been reading about this for years now yeah like it's cool i don't like i just something's not grabbing me though yeah well, and, I, well, and i hope it's not yeah well look at march 13th is a few weeks off i'm on the month yeah. of people off or maybe they'll have an updated trailer and they'll, yeah. they'll integrate some additional uh, data and information about the show the director's name is dave wilson and I did some research on Dave. Dave has never really directed before. But what he's done is he's done some really outrageously good special effects for um, the Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh, okay. And he also worked on the uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed video game. And I went to his Vimeo.com page where uh, cinematographers can yeah, post yeah. their stuff. And he definitely has a good feel for things. We'll see if he can actually direct. Yeah, because directing is a big and, game. And, yeah. big difference. That's, you know? a, that's a huge change. I, this uh, All the films that uh, a Sony... Not Sony. There was a Chinese uh, company. I can't remember the name of them. They actually invested big money into the Valiant line. They signed a contract. For okay, the comic book line Valiant. Yeah, they okay. have about um, maybe eight to ten different properties. So I think they're trying to keep them under you know under a couple hundred million dollars and see what they can do. They maybe they can grow a universe. So I have a funny feeling we may actually see connections to other characters in this. I'm with that. Valiant's that would work better than a solo Bloodshot film. Yes, and Valiant's got a lot of good properties, a lot of good characters like. At their helm, so I'm, I'm with that. I'm 100% with that. Yeah, and lastly, there's an, uh, there's um, uh, the writer of these um, this film is called Eric um, Heiser, Heiserer. He actually wrote The Arrival and Bird Box. Bird, Bird Box is a good film. Bird Box is okay. I, I thought it was enjoyable. Arrival is one of my favorite films. That's it's a, a deep very film. yeah. deep mm -hmm. and touching film. That's that's a well written. It's a smart film. I really like Arrival. Yeah, me too. And uh, the guy who worked on um, uh, Bob Layton, who was a famous comic book inker, uh, okay. he worked for Marvel Comics. He also co-created Bloodshot. Oh, nice. He's contributed uh, some elements to the script that'll help out Eric, the uh, the regular That's author. That's cool. That should okay. be nice. So it's not going to be just loosely based. Okay. That that gives me a lot of hope. So that's Bloodshot. That's March thirteenth. Now here's another film that has been sort of in a bit of turmoil, but it seemed like out of nowhere about a month ago. They said the new Mutants film was ready to go in 2020. I'm thinking... When is that coming out? What's well, the date of... Well, that's uh, April 3rd. Okay. Uh, uh, that, you know the first trailer actually came out almost two years ago? I know, I know. And then they shelved it with the the, trend, the acquisition of Fox being bought by Disney. So uh, I, I well, understand that... You know, I understand, it but least, least, there must have been a lot more shot that, that Marvel could use or, than because all of a sudden the film was ready faster than, than, than I thought. Exactly. I thought it was done, right? Yeah. So maybe either they were quiet about the fact that they actually finished the film up in the Marvel Studio land, mm. and they just they didn't want to say anything about it. Like a lot of times I personally believe, and we talked about this, and I think you, you like the idea also, keep, keep your studio stuff that's taking place within the studio. Yes. Should not be on the internet because they make us they spoil everything, they make a bigger machine and, out of it. And then they get influenced and change things. And I don't like that when they start to alter their vision to try to appease fans for something that's not even out. Yeah. Well, horror's popular these days and this is gonna hint at a little bit of horror. That's what they said initially before the, the Doctor Strange multiverse of madness. This would have been the first comic book horror movie. Right, right. But I think it's, it's probably going to be more of a super, supernatural horror film as opposed to a uh, Blood and Guts one, obviously. Yes, like, yes. Good what's call. Behind the Wall, Spooky House. It's, yes. That's very popular yeah. these days and stuff. It's got a great cast. I think it has a lot of attention. And uh, superheroes mixed with a little suspense. We really haven't seen that much. Lock and Key, that's a TV show that's coming yeah. out. We'll have a little bit of that. Um, I think this is exciting. Um, and this is the last of the like this ends that whole x-men run that fox it does. line this is the last little bit so who knows what might be hidden in this film you well, know it's, it's funny you mentioned that because i'm actually a bit optimistic because i've been also hearing some rumors that they might try to connect it to the marvel universe of films that... they might hint or maybe somebody will show up or a logan who knows because there's talk of uh hugh coming out of retirement i heard that i heard the, i heard that that might be fan based but i mean i would love to see it <laughs> yeah at least for one film yeah so anyway, that's that. That's our little uh, discussion on the new mutants film. Now this one's probably going to be the biggest one of the year, I believe. Uh, May first, we have mm, Black Widow. Black Widow. I mean, the trailers look good. I must admit, it gives me that Captain America Winter Soldier vibe. Yeah, it does. Oh, the, I, I felt the same way. The yeah. choreography is going to make or break this film, 
And you know what's interesting, interesting about that? She actually is pretty good with some of the stunts. She can do a few, and they have some people that actually can stunt for her nicely. Okay. Because she's been good at most of the Marvel movies. Her stunts, her stunts have looked fairly well, and I'm very excited about her in the film. It is the final film that Scarlett will be involved in. She's yeah. said it more than once. And I get it. There's that cognitive dissonance with the fans who are like, well, she died in Endgame, and how is she back? It's a prequel. Yeah, exactly. They've been, at first we heard that Tony was going to have a cameo, now it's a little bit under wraps, but Tony's going to have a cameo. Yeah, I so. believe he will. So anyway, more than likely there's going to be a new Black Widow after this film. Possibly the blonde sister that we see in the trailers. And she, she's a, uh, what's her name? Her name is Florence Poog. Yeah, she was uh, from Midsommar. And fantastic in her role. Check out our review of Midsommar. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. A, it's a good one. It's a yeah. really good one. And I think that's really nice that they're not going to get rid of the character. I think they shouldn't get rid of the character. So let's keep her going. Yeah, no, if, she, if there's another iteration, that that would definitely be awesome. But I, like I said, I think the fact that the Black Widow, it's been a long time. She deserves her own movie. The choreography is probably going to be amazing. And it's kind of a, the last of the old guard getting theirs. It's going to be it's going to be good. I'm yeah, excited. You mentioned a little more of a serious film, too. Not as uh, not as much of the ga uh, gimmicky stuff, you know? Yeah. And lastly, David Harbour plays the Red Guardian, who was like yes. the Russian Captain America, as they say, you know? A little heavier around the weight. Oh, yeah. You know, the gun. It's just water weight. The one thing I was thinking about before we wrap up at least this movie is... The thing that made Captain America so good, and I think that we we lose in the big Avengers movies, is the point of reference between regular humans and superpowered people. Right, right. And I think we're going to get to see that in this film, because it's going to be a lot of humans, but it's also going to be some superpowered people, especially with the Taskmaster character, which I like the design on him. He looks great. He looks great. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I think everybody in this film is predominantly not a super-based... Uh, they didn't, they weren't in a gamma explosion or anything. They're all basically sort of people who, uh, who are in good shape, who can do certain things. By the way, David Harbour also plays the sheriff in Stranger Things. Oh, yeah, if you, don't, if you haven't seen that little show... This is another film that's probably going to be huge also for AT&T DC Company. June 5, Wonder Woman 1984. 1984. Mm. I was a little bit hesitant when they said 1984, but after seeing that trailer a couple months ago, I'm ready. Yeah, it I looks it. amazing. Yeah, I think uh, I think the reason why they're keeping it in the past, and I wasn't really thrilled about it at first, but I think it's they're still um, they're still working on her. They're able to make money on it. They don't have the rest of their slot of films in place now, like their JLAs and the rest of their films. So the interconnectivity, so they don't have to reference correct the new characters. Good call, and it That's works smart. really well yeah. for them. It's written by uh, the story was written by uh, Jeff Johns and Patty Jenkins, who's back again as the director. Jeff Johns, yeah, he's, solid he's a solid DC, DC writer. writer. He really is. Uh, the film should definitely have a nice feel to it. I think the trailer even looks very very much like a, a comic based uh, story. Now, one thing that I think is going to hinge a lot on what's going to happen is how good actual Cheetah's going to look. Played by Kristen Wiig. Yeah, which I think, could look a little shaky almost. I mean, yeah. it could. I we haven't seen going. anything yet, so fingers crossed. I think Kristen Wiig is going to crush it, Me personally. Too. Me too. The acting, uh, the CGI, how she looks is, is, is going to be a deal breaker. But I'm very excited for this. And the bottom line for this film also, look at, I'll buy a ticket to anything, this jovial and beautiful nature, uh, a natural woman that she is, Gal Gadot. She's just, she's easy on the eyes and she's kind of fun. She's nice. She hasn't done anything stupid on Hollywood. She's very, she's like a real down to earth girl. You know girl. she was like a, an, an Israeli soldier? I heard that. Yeah, yeah. that's why, like, that's well. why she, that grit for uh, Wonder Woman comes off so well. I, I, I do smell a big hit for that film, by the way. So this one here, I'm not really sure to what to say, but this is a Sony film. It's Morbius. It's uh, July July 10th is the premiere. And this is like super Sony. Marvel doesn't really have their hands too much in this. There's no Kevin Feige magic, I don't believe. Well, here's there isn't, but there's something that is actually interesting. At the end of the film, uh, Michael Keaton shows up. So they are connecting the secrets, the Sinister Six on the Sony side, I think. Yeah. Which will probably tie into Marvel's intervention, maybe on the next Spider-Man film. No, yes. Now, the Venom, like the Venom movie, was a little bit. It was good. It made a bucket of money at the box office. It was but just it, for the character, I think. But it felt like it was. It came out ten years too late. The actual movie, like it just, it didn't seem up to standard. Yeah, it seems like yeah. a like a 2010 movie yeah. or something. So but. hopefully they revamp with Morbius. He now. Well, there Jared, is a Venom two this year, which we'll get to yeah. soon. Yeah, oh. Jared Leto got a bad rap for Joker. He did. He's actually a really good actor, 
So I really think that he can bring a lot to the role of Michael Morbius. Well, we'll have to see, but I'm very excited. Well, Daniel Espinosa is the director, and uh, he, he's definitely actually got some connections. Um, he, he was involved in a couple of really good films. He was in, involved in Life, which is where they find an alien in outer space, and they touch oh, it. Oh, that's a crazy movie. It's not a, movie, not a bad movie, but he's, he's involved. he was involved in Safe House. Oh. Which with, with Denzel. Yeah. That's a great freaking that movie, man. Like, man on Fire is another good movie. I don't yeah. know who directed that, but Denzel is, is, is a badass. I, I love Denzel. He's fantastic. Yeah, and Denzel does not put himself with bad projects. Correct. So that that means we got some faith in this so, guy. Yeah. So this could be an improvement. This Morbius could be an improvement over the 2018 Venom film. I think. Yeah. I'm a vampire uh, freak too. I, I like. Van I've read all those Aaron and Rice vampire novels. I like vampires. So I'm a little excited. You know. And but, Jared Leto has a, has a fan base that people like. So I think that'll probably also help for the, for the film. So anyway, we just talked about Venom. Yeah. So October two, Venom two arrives. Venom. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> Look at here's the neat thing about it. This guy is extremely perfect. People love him. He's he does a lot of great things. Andy Circus. Andy Circus. What's he, he doing in this movie? First time directing. Woo! And that means he's controlling all of the oh! Venom movements. Let's hear it for Andy Circus. That's crazy. That's big news. You should have led with that. Don't bury the lead next time, kid. Well, sorry I didn't bring Damn. it up quicker, but I do Yo, expect a, a quality jump in this film compared to the last one. Yes. And, and wow. Tom, a fan favorite, Tom Tom Hardy returns. Love Tom. Love me some Tom Hardy. I want Tom to talk a little louder occasionally because he mumbles his words. Yes. And that's a, kind of an ongoing joke in Hollywood, but I think the Circus is not going to fuck around here. No, 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 no. He's learned a lot by working with all these people. And... This is his first movie. He wants to make a big, huge splash in Hollywood. He does. As far as a director. Wow. Uh, Kelly Marcel, who's the writer on this film, mm -hmm. she did write Venom 1, for what it's worth. Uh, but I'm not too thrilled about Fifty Shades of Grey, but I'm still, I still feel that uh, Andy Serkis, this is going to be a whole different script yes. here. This is going to be very, very good. Uh, it should be leagues abo above the last one. And I think we're also going to see more of a superhero dynamic with Sir Circus involved with the Venom character. Yeah. He's going to have a lot more activity going on. How do you think the tone of this film is? is you think it's going to stay the same? You think it's going to change? Because it was like a a buddy. It, it had that buddy cop feel with it did. Venom. I think it's going to be not even anything like the last film. Okay. I think they're going to, they want to make it where it's more of a, a superhero film. So are you, do you think we're going to, speaking of Toms, do you think we're going to get a cameo from Mr. Tom Holland. Well, our, they, our they want to work with these guys. I love it. I, I love it. I, I have heard no hints of it, but I mean, they do want to connect all these. Films. That this would could be, be the one to do it. That would be a beautiful surprise. Wouldn't that blow people away if that was an unannounced yeah. thing? And but you know what? I feel I feel like they're going to connect Morbius somehow, or maybe or maybe vice versa. But I would like to see Tom Holland. That would be huge to me. Well, I think I think you're something up because July 10th and October. Between July 10th on Morbius and October 2 on Venom, that's a lot of time and everything, but it's very feasible that Morbius will be in the Sinister Six also. Yeah. Which we're going to see more of in Venom 2. So it's probably going to do a lot of hinting of the villains that are going to face Spider-Man. So the next project they're probably working on is where the Venom and the Spider-Man all finally meet and the Sinister Six. That's going to be mega fucking yeah, huge. But can I'm this, sorry to swear. But, no, no, no. but can, this, can this iteration right now that we have of... Of Spider-Man, can he deal with like all of these powerhouse villains? He could barely deal with Vulture by himself. Well, if you've uh, read some great comics in the past where Spider-Man's had to deal with these characters, he's found ways to get around it. Okay. But Spider-Man won't have a solo film where he does it by himself. He'll get some help. Could be a new Marvel character introduced, maybe. Okay. He'll have a little help. That uh, that okay. You know, that's under that's, that's more what I'm feasible. hoping for. I don't know who it would be, but I expect it'll be something like that. You know. Maybe a Matt Murdock. Oh. Yeah. That would work too. Yeah. Anything's possible with uh, with Spider-Man. He could definitely find ways to make things work, and he likes to work with people who are part of the New York City scene. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about uh, the other day. We were chatting about Charlie Cox and um, Charlie Cox, possibly Kristen Ritter, who plays Jessica Jones, could be in that movie. Maybe. Yeah, so that would be awesome. Be a good place to introduce him. Yes, if you don't want to have him introduced in the middle of a super heroic movie, no. one of the down-to-earth New York City-based ones. Yes, yeah, I think that's something to watch. Yeah, good call. Twenty twenty wraps up with um, November six. The big film, the last big project Jack Kirby did at Marvel called The Eternals. So, the latest news on the latest buzz with The Eternals is that it's going to be a super sci fi movie. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And also, it's a huge cast, too. So, I think. Kit Harrington's in it. Yeah, Kit Harrington. Thrones. Oh, yeah, who else is in there? It's pretty good. Angela Jolina Jolie, if you like her. Yeah. Uh, she's okay. So, Selma Hayek is always great. 
And there's a bunch of younger names that you that you know the faces, but I don't I can't remember their names off the yeah. top of my head. It's a star studded cast of really good talent. And this movie actually takes place after the events of Endgame. So what I'm assuming is that the Eternals have been around. Eternally. <laughs> yeah, eternally. But the events of Infinity War and Endgame with the snap. Maybe woke them up or got their attention. Like, what the hell is going on? You know, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, in some ways, if uh, if Marvel already had the FF movies or the Fantastic Four films going, they would have already introduced the Watcher, who oversees everything that happens in yes the, the, that cosmic part we of the might, universe. That's a good call. We, we actually, might get them in this movie. That's what I'm thinking. But the Eternals are sort of like um, a, a more modernized version of overseers of the Infinite Universe. Yes. So whatever happened in the, in the Infinity films, in the last two Avengers films, and the Snap, and everything else. They are definitely have awoken, because the comic book opens up where it goes back to like a Mayan civilization, and they start realizing everything that's there is actually the aliens, which is what they talk about on TV a lot on the ancient aliens TV shows. So the the the, uh, the Eternals have been here when man was just uh, an ape, you know, just a barbarian yeah. in the water. So it's going to be interesting to see how they may have set up how superheroes came to be. Oh, that'd be cool. Because they haven't explained anything about the mutant gene, because there's no mutants in the Marvel Universe yet, but yeah. I'm sure they'll address it. They might be responsible for everything. That'd be cool. Which I think is going to make the you know the heritage of Jack Kirby's characters become something of really great importance instead of just a wash away oh, yeah, movie. Yeah. No, no, no. I think this is going to be good for the next decade. Yeah, we're going deeper in the in the Kirby's universe, and, and I'm very excited about yeah. that. So I think Jack's happy. He'll be uh, the director in spirit. Yeah, and check, I think check, be check out our two uh, awesome, awesome tributes to Mr. Jack Kirby. Oh, please do, please do. I just uh, I just recently posted one of those on a couple of the different Jack Kirby fan pages on Facebook. The dudes are losing their mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they love it. Those are, those are pretty good. Yeah, another thing I want to say about this is Kit Harrington's playing the Black Knight. Some people are wondering if his character is going to get killed off. It's so possible. I don't know. Another thing that was brought up in an article that I actually read was the fact that since the snap... Since Iron Man's first appearance and the and rest of the Avengers, that the world is now used to super powered individuals. Yeah. So, so from what I read from one of the inside Marvel Studios is that nobody's going to be too shocked if the Eternals come. Right, but there still be a little bit of that, like. Wow. Be, they're we've massive. seen superheroes. But yeah. We've never seen this. Yeah, there'll, there'll definitely be a shock, but it won't be like panic because sure. of everything that's sure, going sure. on yeah. you know but they're gonna know there's a that's some kind of a premonition of something big to come yeah which will work out pretty smooth yeah i'm really interested in the fact that they said this is going to be one of the truly very sci-fi marvel movies because you had Gar both guardians of the galaxy yeah definitely uh end game and infinity war were sci-fi with everything that was going on in there but like i'm very interested this may be and you said this before in our um in our jack kirby uh tribute that this may be the biggest movie. It could be. It could be. I, I, it, it, if Marvel connects everything to it, it by default, it's going to be a good movie. Marvel is so, in such a place now, they can stack the deck on their films, and you any film that you think might be like, you know, like they said years ago, like I thought, like the Guardians was going to be their first Every, bomb. They like, can yeah. make anything work. Yeah. I think we're going to see like even the giant Marvel monsters in the future, where Groot came from, and all the tall monsters that were related yeah. to things. It's unlimited where they're going to go. I think this is their next big, um, big film that really sets it up. You think this is going to set up a lot, maybe Galactus and a lot of different things down I the line. I think so. Yeah, I think it's going to set up the possibility of the F Fantastic Four, how that gets in the universe, and maybe some hint of what the X Men are about without even necessarily touching it. So this serves the same purpose as, purpose as the Kree Skull War, yeah, which we had in the first Avengers movie, though they didn't call them the Kree and the Skrull. Yeah, but essentially as big as what that did for the first twelve years of their wow. universe, or at least the first five excited. or six years, and that's November six. Yeah, which means what they're planning after that means 21, 2021 is going to be off the charts then, because you're going to see a bunch of new films, Doctor Strange two, a lot of films are going to come out. Real quick, now that I'm thinking, you, you got my brain buzzing. Going back to Morbius, do you think that we could get a cameo from that great actor that's going to play Blade? Oh, could be. Mahershala, Mar Mahershala Ali. Oh yeah, why not? Cause he signed. Yeah, yeah. So and that's a vampire. Yeah. Oh, so, guess what? Blade's gonna probably help Spider-Man out. Ah! You hit right on ah, that, man. Cause Marvel's yeah. got two vampire films happening for a reason. Yeah. Interesting. Ah, mm, that's crazy. Yep. 
I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah, I think they're starting to delve into uh, their, their universe a little further, you know? That's and if exciting. they tie in all their TV shows they're talking to, you've got the possibility of Moon Knight helping Spider-Man out eventually. Yeah, because now... There's so much you can do. Because now it's, it's no longer Marvel Television, it's Marvel Studios TV yeah. now. With the, the rebrand. So yeah. every now now everything's going to be connected. It's great, so, because in between movies, you can have things happen in the TV shows that help keep the pace going, keep the buzz going, and it launches right into, like, let's say, uh, you know, this film here, we're talking about the, the Eternals. There's no dull moments anymore. Since, since we're here and since we're on the subject of the TV shows, <laughs> did you catch a look at that uh, USA agent? I only heard about it, but I haven't. Yeah, they had they had a stock photo. It's a pretty good stock photo. He, he's he got the full gear on. This, the USA agent suit looks good. It looks good. It looks official. It's going to look better in the movie, obviously. So, And he's playing pretty much the anti-cap. He's got the shield. Like the OG shield. Dude, that's gonna be impressive. So, yeah. So and I Because he's in black. I yeah. Believe, right? Yeah. So Bucky and the Falcon is gonna be about the transitioning of the shield. Should Sam have the shield? A lot of that's a lot of that's gonna play a part in the Serves narrative. Serves a great purpose yeah. too, I love it. So USA agent initially getting the shield first, but kind of being like So a he's loose probably cannon. gonna be in that show first and eventually that leads to something else. He might be on T V first then. Yeah. That, I think that show's going to be really that good. That show's going to be better than anybody's believing. Yeah. I mean, like, Disney knows they got everybody in control right now. And they got, they, they're got they in the driver's seat. They got everything going their way. I mean, after The Mandalorian, everybody's so stoked for, yeah. for brand new Marvel cart uh, cartoons. Marvel the TV product, stuff. yeah. Can't wait. Well, that about wraps up the slate yeah. for 2020, brother. Yeah. All right, so um, I guess I'll see you in the theater. See, I de we definitely. I'll be right next to you. Popcorn in hand, everybody. Yep, yep. Henny boys, out. Out. Thank you. Woo. Oh, that was good. That was nice, man. I think our passion is, is noticeable, and I think the fans who listen to our shows. Yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. That this was a this was a solid. You, the notes, the notes were obviously fucking. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, actually uh, review the films individually. It's gonna be a nice year catching films. Yeah, I I definitely think I'm a. You know what? I'm really excited for the Eternals, and I think Morbius might do. Like, I, like I know Black Widow's gonna be good. I know Wonder Woman's gonna be good. Morbius has the chance to be good, but I think the Eternals is going to be the fucking one. I say that's probably the one, and it's funny how that's the last one in the slate too. But don't, but don't like undersell. I know you haven't, but don't undersell Andy Serkis on that Venom too. That, that too, could yeah. be a no, super that, that was huge. That's going to be a good I, movie. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I didn't know that. Was I only favor places that actually make me feel comfortable when I go there. Yeah. Sometimes I'll have to suck it up and get something that I have from another place that I don't really um, like their price or anything, but at least they're going to give me a, hey, how you doing? You know, yeah, kind of thing. and it goes such a long way to getting like that repeat business, you know, because it's one thing to get somebody coming in, but it's another thing to keep people coming in, you know, like that is more important than, you know, just you know, hit and run business. That's actually the key to the whole thing, because you can always dazzle somebody on the first sale, and and they, you know and hopefully they're going to say hey I like the plays they were friendly very yeah. helpful, but if you really really sell them you've built the, you're building a relationship that yeah. you like and yeah <clears throat> you know, relationships that's why you... it is and and that, and that relationship is so important because if it works out well it could be generational too you could get that kid's kid that's et cetera, true et cetera. the that mother's is happy very true. sometimes there's a nice looking lady that comes along with the family and yeah, yeah. she's delightful and nice to talk to that's a little sidebar but yeah you know, that's a little sidebar that's a nice thing. Uh, <clears throat> Humans are just inherently lazy. That's exactly why we don't get it everywhere like you should. I mean, it's a simple thing. Just engage, be friendly, and just try to make relationships. Yeah. But they think it's hard work. Yeah. Right, it's a form of work, but is it really hard? It's not hard. It's no. definitely not hard. 